Hello, friends. This is Maureen Lee Maloney, and welcome back to My Doc Journey, the show where I reveal every step in my process of creating a feature length documentary, even the steps where I fall down and cry. First, I have to talk about a video that I watched earlier today. It is an interview between Ava DuVernay and Justin Simeon, and it's you can find it on the Sundance Collab page, uh, which is collab, C-O-L-L-A-B dot Sundance dot org. That is a really great resource. It's a website uh, for filmmakers to, you know, you can kind of network on there. I don't I don't do well networking online. I don't know, you know, how many people actually use that. But they have tons of great videos um, on different in re- different resources and stuff like that. And this interview between Ava DuVernay and Justin Simeon is gold. It has so much really great information. It's very inspiring. They're both amazing filmmakers. And so definitely go check that out. Listen to it. It's like an hour and 10 minutes or something like that. I will put the link in the show notes. And that collab.sundance.org, uh, that is free to sign up for. So, and you get, you know, some pretty cool resources. So definitely check that out. So uh, next I'll talk about what I accomplished this week. And I want to do one more little recap about what I've done so far. I, I mentioned before that I had this idea for this Madagascar doc that I wanted to make. It took me a long time to really figure out my specific story because I don't just want to like, you know, make a travel video or something like that. I want to make a film and a film has a story. It's, you know, it has characters. It reveals something. And the story that I came up with is about v- uh, female vanilla farmers and kind of what they go through. And there's a, a few reasons for this. Personally, women's stories are really important. They're totally under undertold, women farmers in particular. And, you know, the Malagasy culture, I did really kind of want to show the people in the culture there because it is really cool. So back in March, I started reaching out to friends of mine who worked in the vanilla industry. Some of my Peace Corps friends had gone back and started sustainable vanilla businesses or were working in that industry in some way. So I started talking to them, getting uh, feedback from them. And this is after I had done some initial research, obviously, into this topic. They gave me some more information and they helped me connect with some people in Madagascar who could actually help make the film. And that is how I got connected with uh, Samson Kayed, who is going to be helping me in the country. He's sort of my my associate producer there in the country, helping me connect with the, the communities. And during that time, I was also researching fundraising strategies and, yeah, basically developing a fundraising plan. Uh, then in April ish, I was, you know, writing my proposal. I was coming up with my budget, doing more research. Uh, May and June were a little slow for me. I, you know, I got up the website going, social media accounts. I applied to a few grants, um, and most importantly, I found my fiscal sponsor, which I mentioned last time with From the Heart Productions. And now we're in July, and things are starting uh, to kick into gear. Before, I was working two jobs, so 40-plus hours a week. So I am working now kind of part-time as a bartender uh, just to get a little extra money in in my pocket uh, to (laughs) help keep this thing going. So I have a bit more free time now. I'm dedicating pretty much all my free time to this uh, film. I got my crowdfunding page up, and, and I did that. Right now I'm, I'm doing my crowdfunding just through uh, Network for Good, which was, is connected with the From the Heart Productions. And I've been sending out some emails to people, letting them know that that is happening, although admittedly I have not been sending enough emails I also found another associate producer here in the States to help me, uh, Andrea Norgren, uh, who's who's produced some other things. Um, She's going to be, you know, uh, helping me a little bit. Filmmaking is such 
a huge undertaking. I really can't emphasize enough how much you need help with things. Then I've started contacting some local businesses about hosting events. So businesses specifically that are that use vanilla or are vanilla related that can maybe host events, you know, restaurants where a, a, a certain percentage of the sales the night of our event get donated to the film or something like that. So I'm working on those kind of fundraising things. And uh, that is basically where I'm at. That, I think that pretty much sums up what, I, what I've been working on. So next, I want to talk about the first steps that you'll need to take if you want to become a filmmaker. If you are just, you know, you're working in some kind of profession and you're thinking, I want to make documentary films or maybe a different kind of, of independent film or maybe a web series. Uh, that Ava DuVernay interview, again, is going to be really inspirational for that. But here are the first steps that I would suggest you take. Number one, create your vision. OK, so have an idea of what it is that you want to accomplish as far as filmmaking. You know, what does the future look like? for this for you? Do you just want to make one film? Do you want it to be an ongoing sort of on the side type of thing? Obviously, this can change in the future, but I highly recommend that you get clear on it and write it down because it's so easy to get go down different rabbit holes once you start working on film stuff um, and get really distracted. And it's good to have this. You kind of want to forget it a little bit because you don't always want to think about, again, like I said last week, the the peak, the summit of the mountain, it's going to always look so far away. But you want to write that down somewhere and have it so that you can check back in with it every once in a while. And consider your options. You know, there are so many ways to create content and get it out in the world. You can create a web series. You can, you know, maybe consider a reality TV show. Uh, maybe you w just want to make short films. Uh, maybe you, you definitely, you know, want to lead up to a feature film. Do you eventually want to become like a full-time film producer? Do you want to focus on a skill like cinematography or editing? Do you maybe one day want to work for a nonprofit as a communications director in which you get to create, you know, multimedia campaigns to educate people about things. So these are, I mean, you know, who knows how many possibilities there are out there, but just, you know, envision yourself. What are your goals, you know, personally and professionally? And just to give yourself that, that guiding vision, you know, your next step after that is going to be figuring out the steps that you're going to take after that you're really going to have to check in with your gut. You know, something could seem like the logical path to take and it could totally be a dead end. And another another possibility could seem like completely far-fetched and off the deep end, but it could lead you somewhere great. The only way I would say you can really know the best path to take is, is you know, how does it feel? Does it feel good? What does your gut say? And sometimes you really have to quiet your mind if you want to do the meditation thing or maybe just take a long walk or something like that. Something where you can sort of clear your mind, turn off that busy part of your brain that's always worried about this and that and the other thing and just kind of listen, you know, to what your gut says. How do you feel about this opportunity or that opportunity or this step you could take. Okay, so once you have an idea of where you want to go, what you want to do, you should start taking uh, your first steps towards building a community. Like I said, filmmaking is a huge endeavor. The more people that you have to help you with it, the better. So go on to Facebook, look through meetup.com, try Googling, you know, filmmaking in your community and try to find those groups of people who are interested in film and go out and meet with them. Start networking 
and start volunteering and helping people with their films. This will not only just give you experience and, and help you find people to work on your stuff with, it'll also help you start to figure out even more what specific part of filmmaking you want to be in. And you can start learning the different positions and things. For me, finding a community made a huge difference. I was lucky a few years ago, a new chapter of Women in Film started here in Colorado. And through that organization, I've learned so much. I've met so many amazing people. I've gotten opportunities to work and it has been invaluable. It's been everything. So find your community. And then finally, okay, number three of your, your homework for this week, if you will is start learning the basics. So if you don't know the basics of shooting video and editing, there is an amazing resource called lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A, and this is free through most libraries. So if you have a library card, go to your library's website, look in their resources section, or if you can't find it, I know on the Denver Library website, it is kind of hard to find, but you can talk to a librarian. You can log in using your library card number, and it's free. And they have the best tutorials on everything and anything you could want to learn. Definitely all the different editing programs, cinematography, video production, all that kind of stuff. There's tutorials and they're amazing. And that's the best way to, to start learning the basics and then grab your phone, your camera phone or your camera or whatever you have and go out and start practicing. And then once you start getting more advanced, when, you know, once you're beyond the basics, you can start learning a ton of stuff from YouTube. This especially true for editing. Like if you want to figure out cool editing techniques, uh, you can go on there, uh, especially in the early years of, of learning filmmaking. I spent so much time watching how-to videos on YouTube. A good places to start, Film Riot is a really cool uh, YouTube page. They have, you know, they're for all different kinds of indie filmmakers. So it's all kind of DIY stuff. If you want to do narrative films, you know, horror films, they'll teach you how to do horror lighting and things like that. But it's it's a lot of really helpful things. And then there's people who do more specific sort of cinematography or editing kind of stuff. The videos are are pretty broy. I'm going to go ahead and say they're very broy. But one of them that I really like is Jesse Driftwood. He is, I will say, the least broy of all of them, and he's a very talented filmmaker and does really cool tutorials. So check check out Jesse Driftwood. I'll put the links to these in the show notes so you can check them out. But that's pretty much that's it. That's your homework for the week. Create your vision number 1, number 2, find your community. And number three, learn those basics. So get started there. That, that'll take you more than, a, more than a week, but that's okay. I do want to leave you with a quote. Okay, here we go. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory nor defeat. So if you've ever listened to Brene Brown, she quoted this. This was the inspiration for the title of her book. And uh, I have been listening to Brene recently to sort of get myself brave enough to be posting these uh, these podcasts uh, to, you know, record myself and put it out into the world. And also, if you've been to the Facebook page for my film, Voice of Vanilla, I have been recording myself playing the ukulele. 
and and singing songs that I made up myself. That was what seemed at the time like a really good idea for a crowdfunding reward. And uh, once I actually had to record the songs and post them up for the world to see, I was I realized like, oh my God, this is going to be really embarrassing for me. But <laughs> people have been supportive. It's been okay. And Brene Brown's quote in her book and her, her recordings have been helping me to be brave. So go out there and be brave, meet new people, and start working on becoming a filmmaker. Have a great week, you guys. I will talk to you later. Thank you.